Rocky Top, and you can pick your favorite artist. Uh, you know, this, the chords are pretty much the same. We're going to start on capo gear four, fourth gear, one, two, three, four, capo number four. It's a favorite. It's a great picking tune, and I'm, I'm glad you're here to check it out with me. And uh, it's really easy. You know, it's, we've got a G5 going on here, so we've got the th second finger, and we're just doing the uh, on the low E string, fret three, third finger smeared over the top two strings, third fret. We're doing the old boom chick. We're selling it pretty hard here. Now you could do a couple of things here. We could stay on C. You know, we could keep that third finger smeared over the top two strings or double stopped. Uh, and we just go up to a C sus two or whatever C add nine. Um, C sus two because unless you're putting the second, you know, the, the do re mi in here, which we're not. So we're going back down to E minor 7, and then D, sus 4, and then back to G5. Okay, so that's the verse. F here we could keep that second that third finger smeared with an F you know add six nine right and then The other thing that I'd like to introduce here is that instead of that F here, that F69, it's kind of a, it's a nice sound. It's definitely worthwhile knowing, but it's kind of a, you know, a little lighter, a little weaker sound. So you can really dig back into that F note way down here on position number or fret number one. <clears throat> we'll call it fret number one, even though it's fret number five. The capo turns this into zero fret. So we'll use that as fret number zero one with a thumb. really cool like Jimi Hendrix again you know uh, thumb well, you could actually play that F bar chord if you can grip that right so here's the verse one more time but this time we're going to add a fill into the end of the verse one more time around Break that down real quick. I'm just starting with that. It's a typical kind of bluegrassy lick. But it's um just a, a forward roll, you know, from the G A hammer on to fret one on the A string and then fret two on the A string and then open D. You can leave that on fret two on the D and then jump forward up to the open G, or you can you know reintroduce that open D string and then you have a little springboard jump or and if you're in Nashville you might do it with that F note that leans up to that dominant sound that leans back up to the open G string Roy Curry about that one you know it's a good one so we have this really cool um, verse section that's in just kind of the same the same fingers are smeared over the top two strings and that's great uh, but you may want to check it out uh, another way so that we can actually more closely define the chords that are changing behind the you know instead of using that second that third finger your ring finger to uh, double stop the top two strings maybe what we're doing Maybe, maybe what we're doing is we're going to, uh, after we move from G, we're going up to C, instead of using that, just changing the root note, maybe we'll just go ahead and play the C chord, right? Here's what it sounds like if we're using just all open chords.
So that's kind of where we're going with it. And, uh, you know, it takes a little bit of time to build up that muscle tissue so that we can get that boom chick sound, that boom chick pluck sound up to speed. So, you know, slowly start with a metronome at 60 beats per minute, like we're walking down the street. So it's a boom, tick, boom, tick, something like that. And then once we get that mastered at that level, I know it's painful to do this sometimes, but we receive so much more benefit from going through the motions ourselves instead of just imagining it. Skipping over um, parts, you know, practices where we can actually earn our way, uh, it's not a path forward for, you know, for me anyway, it never has been. And I hope you enjoy playing through this song steadily, repeatedly, in, in a quality manner, consistent with your own high standards. And until next time, happy picking. Yeah.